all right, I was cleaning up the garage and I ran across this thing, which I've had forever. <laughs> I intended to probably use it for something, but then uh, never, never did anything with it. So my very first job when I um, graduated, I worked for Hewlett Packard's um, LED group. It's called the Opto, Opto Electronics Division. And um, there was a group inside the company who built all of the test and measurement equipment to measure optoelectronic devices because you couldn't buy them. They were, it was kind of a new field. And so the group I was in designed a lot of uh, things to measure light and color and you know, all those types of things. And uh, so somebody had designed this before me and it is a box that has a photodiode on it, a one uh, centimeter by one centimeter uh, photodiode. And it's marked radiometric, which means it's measuring uh, watts. It's not measuring lumens or, fluc or lux or anything like that. It's measuring, it's measuring watts. So it's radiometric and it says it's, I guess it's good from 600 to 1000 nanometers. Um, so I'm not quite sure of that range. That's kind of a strange range for the stuff that we worked on, but uh, it also has another marking on it here, which says radiometric detection lamp. So this may have been something to monitor a lamp. Um, although we use the word lamp for a single LED. So it might have been measuring watts of a LED, or it might have been monitoring a lamp that was used in some other piece of test equipment, so a feedback loop. So I'm not quite sure what this was testing, um, but uh, it has a connector on the side, and it has a little little slot on the side. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what's going on in here. missing two screws. We use these boxes for everything in that group. Um, all right, uh, there's a little ribbon cable that we can, looks like we can disconnect. All right, so there's a little ribbon cable that goes to this connector and then there's a PC board inside. Um, and it's quite complicated. Uh, can I zoom down? Yeah, it's quite complicated. It's got the three op amps. Op amps in those days were always uh, in round cans. <laughs> None of this, one of this dip stuff. Op amps were round uh, to begin with. And uh, this op amp has a heat sink on it, which is interesting. Uh, there's a FET switch over here. I recognize it as a, GG2, a DG201. I think that's a quad switch. And it's got lights. It's got LEDs on it. Oh, I see. The little slot here on the side allows you to peer in and look at which LED is lit up. So I'm guessing that these are range switches. Um, this thing picks a particular resistor for a feedback loop and you can set it to, well, this is a, a four-way switch, so you could set it for one of four different, four different um, gain settings. So I guess if you had uh, one where the switch isn't connected to anything, you could have just one and then four different other ones. You could switch in four different other ones. So you could have nothing or four more. So maybe that's what the LEDs are. Um, yeah. So the, uh, Device has a bunch of, like I said, feedback resistors, probably for gain, right? Because optics, you're usually working with very low signals and you need to amplify those up. So if we just kind of peer in here, here's a one meg resistor, here's a one meg resistor, then those are in feedback loops, 11K resistor. And then uh, usually you want to keep the thing, if you have a high gain amplifier, you need to make sure it doesn't oscillate on you. So it's got some, uh, yeah, this is 10 picofarads. Uh, let's see how big is this one. This one's 100 picofarads, 470 picofarads, and, and 33 picofarads. So depending on how much gain you have, you would put in more capacitance or less capacitance. 
So a very high gain, you would have less capacitance. A very, very low gain, you'd have more capacitance. Kind of a gain bandwidth thing that you would do. Um, looks like the board wasn't laid out correctly for this resistor. It's kind of, it's kind of standing up off the board. Um, looks like a four-layer board, which is unusual. That's a lot of money to spend back then for such a simple thing. Now, I don't know why you would have three... Uh, op amps. Um, I have to think about that. Let me get rid of these screws here. Alright, so you might have one op amp that's uh, the trans impedance amplifier that does the uh, measurement of the, the photodiode, and then maybe a buffer amplifier to take that out. Maybe you have a second gain stage. I'm not sure why you have a third one though, unless maybe you need to do program an offset or something. I, I don't, I don't know why you would need a third one. Uh, these are pretty fancy parts they have in here. These are an LT one oh two. Let's see. This is an LT one oh a ten twenty eight. And this is an LT1012. We'll have to look up the data sheets on that. And then this is a brown part that has a heat sink on it. Uh, so he must get toasty. It's an OPA101. So yeah, we're going to have to pull out the data sheets on these and take, take a look at what's going on here. And like I said, this is the DG201 DG um, FET, FET switch. There's a little uh, shielded, shielded uh, wire here that goes to the photodiode. And so there's just two wires, this is just a diode that goes onto the board. But yeah, I can see it's a four layer board. Looks like some bodge wires in the back. So uh, maybe the PC board had an error in it and it was gonna cost a lot of money to spin a board. And these were probably just one time use boards. They were designed for one experiment or one piece of test equipment, never to be replicated. So you wouldn't spend a lot of money. You would just put a bodge wire on it and call it good. Um, yeah. Yeah, I say we uh, take a look at these data sheets. This is dating from, let's see, what are the date codes here? 92, 90, 92, and 83. <laughs> this is an old one, 83 must have been in the stock room. These are pretty new though. Uh, that's, this, this, uh, that's interesting because those are an older time frame from when I was doing work in that group. So I'm not sure how I ended up with this thing. Um, Cause I was doing things up to 80. Wow. I don't know. I think right 1990 is when I left that group. If I, if I can remember correctly, 1987, 80. Yeah. I worked in this group the group that built this measurement equipment, I worked there from 1980 to 1987, I think, maybe 1985, I don't remember now. And then I moved on to uh, different things. Um, so this this is uh, something that was done after my time. Interesting. Um, all right, let's get some data sheets. All right, so what are these three op amps that are used in here? Uh, well, uh, the uh, one on the end here is an LT1012. And um, it says here, the all around excellence eliminates the necessary of the time consuming error analysis procedure in a system design. It can just be stocked as the universal internally compensated precision op amp. So if you just need a good op amp, get a whole bunch of these and stick them in your bin. That's what, that's what linear technology says to do. Um, it does have some pretty nice specs. It's basically an, a replacement for the OP07, which was an old favorite of mine. And uh, it uh, does exactly what the OP07 does, except it uses one eighth of the supply current and one twentieth of the bias and offset current. So it's a much upgraded part. Guaranteed offset of 25 microvolts, 100 picoamps input current, uh, low drift. Yeah, it's just a, just a really, really nice op amp. Okay. I checked digi key. They're about $11. All right. So that's what that one is. The next one they used was an LT1028, about a $14 part. And this one is claimed to fame is it's low noise, high speed. Uh, 
the voltage noise is less than the noise of a 50 ohm resistor. Therefore, even in a very low impedance uh, application, it doesn't contribute to the system noise. So yeah, there you go. Uh, one nanovolt per root hertz. Yeah, it's a pretty nice part. So very, very low noise. And then we have the oldie, the OPA101. You can't buy this one anymore. And it comes with the heatsink. When you buy it, it came with the heatsink. Um, now, the claim to fame of this thing is its input current is 10 picoamps, okay? So that was extremely low. Um, it says each unit is laser trim for low offset voltage and low offset drift. Um, yeah, so it is super, super low input, which is exactly what you want for something like a high gain trans impedance amplifier. And in fact, if you take a look at the application notes for this part, uh, you're using it with a photodiode because it has low, low offsets and picos. And yeah, it's a, it's a good part for that. And in fact, it has a whole write up here on using it for a photodiode. So uh, I think if you were an engineer back in the day and you were looking for a device that did this, uh, yeah, it was one of the few. Um, in fact, I think it says in here, I think it was one of the first, um, and probably it was susceptible to thermal drift. And so they put a heat sink on it to kind of minimize that. So in order to hit the spec that they wanted, I think they put the heat sink on it. Um, so that's my guess. High speed. 10 volts per microsecond for the OP02 gain bandwidth, 40 megahertz. Yeah, so it's a it's a zoomy part. It's a zoomy part and very low current. Um, now I don't think you need a zoomy part for this because you got this big, big, big capacitance here. You got this uh, one square uh, centimeter detector. So they're not looking for speed on this thing, but they are looking for that low input uh, input current. Now, strangely enough. Um, this particular part, the low noise one, also has an application for photodiodes. Now, it doesn't have uh, the input uh, current spec that you want. So they've added a FET on the outside. So by adding this FET on the outside and putting it in the feedback loop, you've increased the input capacitance of the input offset uh, current of the part, and so that they've used here. So this is one mega ohm T T I A photodiode amplifier. Yeah, so make one mega. Ohm. So um, I think the person who designed this just didn't want to think, okay? And money was no object because it was a one-off, and so who cares if it was a twenty-dollar part? So they just said. This one has super low, you know, 10 picoamps. Good to go. We'll use that one. Now, I don't know why they chose the other two, and I don't know what the other two are actually doing. I tried for a while to trace the circuit out, but it's a four-layer board, and it wasn't really, obviously, it, it, and it wasn't really laid out very well. Um, it really wasn't laid out very well. It's a four-layer board, and they still had to put a jumper wire on it, so whoever laid out the board wasn't all that spiffy about it. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, it, probably a quick thing. I want it done next week, lay out a board. I'll just grab some nice expensive op amps. They so don't have to worry about it. And away we go. Um, I, I don't know exactly what they were trying to accomplish with this board, other than it does have different uh, gain ranges. Um, I think the first stage is set. I think that's a one mega ohm fixed gain stage. And then the following stage uses the uh, ad additional things. And then I don't know why you need a third stage. I really don't know what's going on and why one has to be low current and one why has to be one lo low noise because everything's gonna be dominated by this one. So <sighs> it just doesn't make any sense to me. Anyway, uh, I probably won't ever use this board for anything. Uh, might use one of the op amps in some project, but the photodiode is really, really nice. I think if I were going to uh, keep this thing and use it, I would design a new board because I really don't know what this one is doing and there's some better parts these days. Um, I do like the box and um, 
I do like the idea of different game settings and stuff. Maybe you put a switch on the box or something like that instead of having it somewhere else. Um, but yeah, there you go. Just taking a look at somebody else's design and, you know, throwing rocks at it. <laughs> it's probably fine. It was probably fine. Um, so yeah, there you go.